So this video is for combustion setup for the high turndown and the fire tube. You will need a digital manometer and a combustion analyzer. On each nameplate, you'll see the max gas pressure, which is 10.5 inches of water column. The minimum is four inch. And we don't want to see greater than a one inch pressure drop on these boilers. And these boilers are only natural gas. They are not available in propane. So confirm that you have a boiler with natural gas only. Here I'm showing a digital manometer with 10.06 inches of static gas pressure. And again, when we fire at full fire, we don't want to see below a one inch pressure drop. Here I'm showing at full fire that we now have dynamic gas pressure at 9.24 inches, which is less than a one inch pressure drop. So to start, we're gonna log in. And the padlock symbol is in user. So we're going to hit the padlock symbol, we're going to type in 17, enter for the installer level password. And now you can see we're at the installer level. Next, we're going to go to configuration. And the first part of the test is we're just going to check combustion. And we want to do that with O2 trim disabled. So you're going to hit that configuration icon. We're going to come over here to miscellaneous. And on the 20 to 1 products, you'll have O2 trim. So we're going to disable this for the first part of the test. The first part of the test is we're just checking combustion. And if we're within range, we're good. However, if we're out of range, we'll go in and use the AZL controller to set up combustion. I'm going to come back to my home screen. The other thing that's good practice is you may have to elevate your set points. If we're going to lock these boiler or boilers into high fire, you may need longer run time. So in this example, we have a CH1 set point of 142 degrees. And I can choose that under quick start or configuration, either or. So I'm going to choose the configuration icon. And I'm going to go to CH. And I'm going to choose in this example CH1. Go to set point. And I'm going to elevate this in my example to 180 degrees to make sure I've got good run time. Now when I come back to my home screen, I have a CH1 set point of 180. All right. The next step we're going to go is configuration. Here we're going to choose the firing rate icon. What I like to do here, there's something called timeout. And what that is, is if you forget to take this out of enable for example it'll put the boiler back into normal operation for modulation and that's called timeout so your timeout is typically defaulted for 1200 seconds that's 20 minutes well if we're doing combustion testing on the boilers it's always good to give it a one hour timeout so one hour is 3600 seconds so that gives us one hour to complete this combustion analysis and if we forget, it'll take it out of this firing rate manual run. The next step, we're going to choose enable burners. So I want to enable this function. Now my manual heat demand becomes available. And now I can choose a manual heat demand. And what this is, I'm going to come back to my home screen. And you'll see in a minute or two, we're going to have under boiler status a demand. So here we're going through a combustion calibration. So we've given this a demand and now the boiler will operate for us. Be patient and let the boiler light and start to modulate. So here our igniter is on. We now have a flame signal and a flame pattern main burner is now on. So I'm going to go back to configuration. I'm going to choose that firing rate icon. So we're still in manual heat demand. And now I'm going to choose my firing rate box. This is a 20 to 1 boiler, meaning low fire is 5% of modulation. And I want to go right to 100%. So I'm going to type in 100%. Press OK and let this boiler modulate to 
And you can go right back to your home screen if you wanted to and watch this boiler modulate up. Now also, when the boiler gets to 100% of rate, we want to check the incoming gas pressure. With your analyzer in the flue, we're going to be checking combustion. If we're out of range, we'll show you how to make the adjustments. Our range here is 8.8 .8 to 9.2. So again, we're reading CO2, and here we have 9%, which is good. However, if it was off, we would go in and make adjustments. But now that we've checked high fire, we want to go to low fire. So back to the link control. We'll come back to configuration. Back to firing rate. We're still enabled. Go to our firing rate option. Back this out. And we're going to type in 5%. This is a 20 to 1 turn down boiler. Come back to our home screen. You'll now see we have a target rate of 5%. The actual rate is still at 100. It'll start modulating down. When we get down to 5%, be patient with your analyzer, and we should be reading between 8.8% and 9.2% CO2. So here you can see our CO2 value is a little lower than we want. So first, you check the CO2 at high and low fire. If you're within range, great. All we're going to do is disable the manual heat demand and re-enable O2 trim. Don't forget to lower your set point in this example back to 140 and you're done. But if the high or low fire CO2 is out of range, we will stay with the manual heat demand enabled. We must do a multi-point combustion setup using the AZL control. On the HTD models, that's the high turn down 20 to 1, I'll open the cover doors. We have a pressure regulator right here. And on the pressure regulator, you'll have a little brass cap. That's on the water tube design or the HTD. On the fire tube design, our pressure regulator is in behind the door. I have removed the two Phillips head screws and I will open the door. And here we'll see, this is where the pressure regulator is, and we've removed the brass cap for this example. So here on the pressure regulator, we have a manifold tap. You're going to install your manometer now on the downstream side of the gas valve, otherwise known as manifold pressure. Zero out your manometer, and we'll open this up. Now, we need to get in and log in to what's known as the AZL control. The AZL control is programmed with this semen control. The serial numbers match. Do not take the AZL control and put it in your truck, think you're going to use it on the next boiler. You have a fuel button, an air button, a minus, a plus and minus, a reset and enter button. To enter into the control, you're going to press your air and fuel button simultaneously until code appears. After the code appears, you'll see seven dashes, and you'll type in your code. An example of that, the code for a Magnatherm HTD would be 1901, a Magnatherm fire tube would be 2001, or HTD or FTs manufactured before 12-3 of 2020 will have a different code, and that is 9876. It's so very simple. My first digit here or dash, I'm going to press this till I get to number 9. Now I'll use the reset button becomes my enter button. Next digit is 8 the next digit is seven, and lastly, six. Press the enter button again, and you'll see 400 SET appear on your screen. Press the enter button again, and now you'll see we're running. 
Press it one more time, and here we're showing P1. P1 is low fire. We want to check the offset pressure at P0. P0 is light off. So I'll use my down arrow. So here we're at P0. We want to check the manifold pressure on our pressure regulator and follow the chart. What model number are you working on? In this example, this is an HTD million six or an HTD 1600. And on the chart, it shows that we need 2.15 inches of water column. We're only going to set this at P0, which is light off. That's the only time we're going to adjust this pressure regulator. So I'm going to loosen the cap. And we're going to make a slight adjustment here. Put your cap right back on. And you'll see here we're at 2.15 inches of water column. So we're complete at light off. That's the only adjustment we're going to make at P0. I'll disable the manometer here. And we can put that back on the incoming gas pressure. There's nine other points, P1 to P9, that we want to check combustion at. We always start at high fire, so I want to increase this right to P9. And here we are. We're now going to modulate to high fire at P9. Wait for your modulation to come. The actual rate, we're modulating up. We need to get to high fire at P9. So here at P9, you'll see on the analyzer, we're at 9.2% CO2. If you needed to make an adjustment, you press and hold the A button or the air damper. We never adjust the fuel damper. To increase CO2, we would take away the air. To decrease CO2, you would add air. So in my example, I will hold the air damper down and hit the plus button. You'll notice at the higher end of modulation, example P6 to P9, when we get into increasing or decreasing air, you'll have to hit it multiple times. So here I'm gonna hit it about 10 times release it, and check my analyzer. It's less sensitive than it is in the lower modulation range. So example down at P3, P2, P1, it's more sensitive there, and I'll have to hit the rich it out or lean it out less times. So here we're showing I've now decreased from 9.2% CO2 down to 9.1. Once you're done with P9, what we'll do is go to P8. And to get to P8, I'm going to hit the minus button. And you'll see P8 appear on your AZL control. Here on your boiler, you'll see it start to modulate down. And be patient. Be patient with your analyzer. So here at P8, we're still in range. And again, our range is 8.8 to 9.2. Here we're showing... 9.1% CO2. Again, if I needed to make that adjustment, hold the air damper down, either plus or minus, take away the air or increase the air. Next, I'm going to go down to P7. To get to P7, very simply, hit the minus arrow. Be patient with your analyzer. So here at P7, I'm running right at 9% CO2. And again, if I want to increase that, I would hold my air damper down, take away the air to increase it. But we're still within range of that 8.8 eight to 9.2. So follow these steps all the way down to P1. So right now, I'm going to go right from P7 right down to P2, but you need to check each point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press this until I get down to P2. Be patient with your analyzer. The boiler will modulate down. And here we're showing at P2, we're at 8.7%. So we want to increase this to at least to get to 8.8 .8, uh, or target 9%. So again, how do we do that? You're going to pressure air damper and remove air. And I hit that like five times. 
Be patient with your analyzer. If you need to make additional adjustments, again, only do that by holding the air damper down. Lastly, we'll go to P1. P1 is low fire. In here at P1, you'll see we are in range. We're at 8.9%. So once all your nine points have been set, to get out of this control, we're going to press the plus and minus buttons simultaneously three times. Once, twice, three times, we're back in normal operation. I'll set this down. So now that we're complete, we're going to choose configuration, come under the firing rate, go to manual heat demand and disable it. Okay. We'll come back to the home screen and you'll see your boiler drop out. It's now in post purge and ASC, which stands for anti short cycle is now on the screen. That's 60 seconds. And it's always good practice to retest your boiler two or three times for smooth light off after setting up combustion. You don't have to take it all the way to full fire. You just wanna make sure it's gonna light off smoothly and modulate. So to do that, I'm going to go back to configuration, firing rate. I'm still enabled under enable burner, but I'm going to go back into my heat demand and re-enable this function. I'm going to go back to the home screen and wait for my anti-short cycle. And again, that's set up for 60 seconds. After that 60 seconds dissipates, the boiler will come in and start purging and calibrating. Here we're showing the blower on, combustion calibration, so it's going to go through the process and it will relight the boiler. So again, it's good practice to double check this two or three times. Now, once you're done, do not forget, if you elevated your CH1 set point, go back into configuration, choose CH, CH1, and I'm going to go back to set point. In my example, we were set for 142 degrees previously. Click OK. When I come back to the home screen, I'm now back to 142 on my set point. My boiler is now relighting. Why? Because I'm still under that firing rate manual run function. So once you're done there, okay, after you've tested it for two or three times, come back into firing rate, and you can just disable this function right from here. What happens when we disable this, it automatically takes the manual heat demand function away. If you have any technical questions, please contact the factory at 1-800-900-9276.